Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to explain a concept that a ton of students struggle with, and that's the difference between Z statistics and T statistics, as well as when to use each one of them. Now, if you've already seen our video on the normal distribution, you might notice that this equation for Z is a bit different than what we discussed in that video. So before we get to Z versus T, we need to discuss the difference between a Z score and a Z statistic. If you recall from our earlier video, we discovered that our formula for z was z equals x minus the mean mu divided by the standard deviation sigma. And this is what's considered a z-score because it's used for a single value x in a sample. For example, you might use this to find the z-score of your single grade on a stat test compared to the sample size of your class. However, when you're looking at an entire sample within a greater population, such as your stat class among all stat classes in the world, the formula looks like this, where x bar represents the mean of your sample, aka the average grade of your class, mu is the mean of the entire population, aka the mean grade for all stat classes, sigma is the standard deviation of the population, and n is the sample size, aka the number of students in your class. And when used in this context of sample out of a greater population, it's called a z-statistic. So now that we covered the difference between a z-score and a z-statistic, we can get to the juicy stuff, the difference between z-statistics and t-statistics. In order to use this z-equation, we need a few values. We need the sample mean, x-bar, the population mean, mu, the sample size, n, and most importantly, the population standard deviation sigma. If you have all those values, you can be confident in using a normal distribution that looks like this. However, a lot of the time you're not going to have the standard deviation of the entire population. If we think back to our stat grade example, that would require getting the grade of every stat student in the world and using that to find the population standard deviation, which just isn't really plausible. So what can we do instead? Well, instead of using the population standard deviation, we can replace that with the standard deviation of our smaller sample. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you calculate a t-statistic. Okay, that's great, but what does that actually mean and what does it look like? Well, because our sample standard deviation is at best an estimate for our population, there's some room for error. Especially with a smaller sample size, we are less confident that our distribution looks like a normal distribution. For example, if you take a sample size of just two values, we can't be too sure of the standard deviation's accuracy. So your distribution is going to be a little less centralized and more spread out towards the tails. However, as you take a bigger and bigger sample size, you can be more and more confident that your sample standard deviation is correct, and as a result, your distribution will get closer and closer to the normal distribution. So I know that might have been a bit more information than you were expecting, but at the end of the day, the main rule of thumb is to use z-statistics if the population standard deviation is known, and t-statistics if it is unknown. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button to support us making more helpful videos for you. And if you didn't, please leave us a comment down below to let us know what we can do better. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.